Okay, so next, uh, carry on with a couple more questions on the McLaren series and Taylor series. Um, so we've got another function here. So this firstly says, um, gives us a function, write down the constant term in the McLaren series for f of x, and then we find the first three derivatives. So it's kind of it's a very standard kind of uh, McLaren series kind of question. Um, so this is the formula that we're going to be using, um, and to find the first the first term, this f of zero, uh, we just put x is equal to zero into this here. Okay, and if we do that, we get zero. Okay, so that's that's it. One mark, very easy. Um, we then need to find the first three derivatives of f of x, and then obviously we can use this formula again. So let's just check how we can do that. So f dash of x uh, is probably best to kind of think of it in terms of kind of the u substitution. So we've got ln of u, and it goes to one over u where u is 1 minus x to the minus 1 and then u dash is going to be 1 minus x to the minus 2 the minus 1 and the minus 1 here to cancel out so I end up with, with this thing here and then I do obviously I replace the u with this thing here and then I times it by this okay so hopefully you're familiar with this idea so I get this, this kind of horrible looking fraction here so f of x is equal to this uh, if I rearrange that to make it look a little bit, a bit nicer, I, I end up with one over one minus x. So that is f dash of x. I do the same thing. It's, it's nice, pretty easy to differentiate these functions now. So f dash of x, I you know, write it as x to the minus one. Bring the power down. So decrease the power by one, etc., etc. I have two negatives again, which become positive. So I end up with. 1 minus x bracket to the minus 2 and then this, the, the third differential again same method as before I end up with 2 bracket 1 minus x to the minus 3 so I've got my three differentials um, and then all I need to do is see what happens well when f dash of 0 so I put 0 into, into this and I get an answer of 1 when I put 0 into my second thing I get an answer of 1 and when I put 0 into this thing I get an answer of 2 so these are the three values that I need and all I need to do now is just put these into my formula so if you remember from the formula it's x uh, sorry here we go so x times the first differential and then the value for my second differential times by x squared over 2 factorial and then the third one is going to be the third differential times x cubed over 3 factorial, which 3 factorial is 6. Okay, so I end up with, with this. So there we go. 0 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus 2x cubed over 6. Okay, and that's what I was asked to find. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. So you use this... Uh, series to find an approximate value for ln2. Okay, this first bit's okay. Um, remember, just kind of restate what we've just found out. We've just found out that ln of 1 over 1 minus x is approximated by x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3. So that's what we found out already. So that's what we're going to try and use. Now ln2, well, I need to make this bracket into a value of 2. So basically kind of set that up as an equation I want 1 over 1 minus x I want that to be equal to 2 so that basically gives me x must be a half so I now know that x is a half so now I know that x is a half all I need to do is put x equals a half into this uh, these values here so ln2 is approximated by putting a half in here putting a half in here I'm putting in a half in here. So I work out all this and I get ln2 must be approximate by two thirds. Okay, so and this is well, it does get a little bit harder. So use the Lagrange form of the remainder to find an upper bound for the error in this approximation. This is the formula from the formula book Rn of x f of n plus 1c all over n plus 1 factorial bracket x minus a 
bracket n plus 1, where c lies between a and x. Okay, so this is one of the more confusing formulas that you're given. Let's try and just uh, simplify what we've got. We, we've used f, the third differential. So we've used the third differential in terms of our approximation. So therefore, the n value that we're taking is 3, because that's the first step. We, we approximated up to the third differential, therefore n is 3. And so we can just start off by putting that in there. So r3 of x is equal to the fourth differential over, and this is going to be 4 factorial, x minus a to the power 4. Okay, so try and do this one step at a time. So that's the first thing. The next thing to do is actually work out what the fourth differential is. The fourth differential of the function that I was using, so if I just flip back, my third, my third differential was this, 2 bracket 1 minus x bracket to the minus 3. So if I differentiate this function again, I will get this here, so 6 bracket 1 minus x to the minus 4. Okay, so that's the fourth differential. And then I'm going to replace the x with c. So it's just a constant at the moment. So 6 over 1 minus c to the power 4. And I get this thing here. So the, the approximation, uh, error approximation is 6 bracket x minus a to the power 4, 24, 1 minus c to the power 4. So I've now got it looking like this. Okay, the next thing is to try and get rid of this x and a. And so to do that, you think, well, first off, the expansion was a McLaren, uh, McLaren, which was centered at x equals 0. And our approximation used x is a half. So these are the two values that we're going to substitute in for x and a. And we substitute them in this way around. So we replace the x with the value that we used, which was x is a half. And we replace the a with the, the value where it's, it's centered on. So it's centered on 0. So this is what gets substituted in, a half take away 0. So again, I, I simplify that. And I get this thing here. So it's getting, it's getting simpler, hopefully. Um, and this is the very last step. We just need to work out what is c. So we just need to, we know that c is between 0 and a half. It's basically between these two values. We know that because so that's what our formula tells us. There we go, c lies between a and x. So if these are my two values for a and x, then c has to be between these two values. And it, it can be or, or equal to. So it can be between 0 and a half. All I need to do now is choose which value of c will give me this error as big as possible. I want to find the upper bound for this possible error. So one way to do it would simply just be sub substitute 0 in, and substitute a half in, see which of those gives us the bigger answer. Uh, if we do that, we, we notice that it's when c is a half is that it gives me the bigger answer. So I basically put c is a half in, and I get this is going to be my upper bound, so c bracket half to the power 4, all over 24 bracket 1 minus a half, so that's where my c is gone, bracket to the power 4, and my error bound is less than or equal to this, and if I work this out, I get a value of 0 0.25. So there we go, that is my, my, error, my error bound, it's less than that. And then it says, how good is this upper bound as an estimate for the actual error? Okay, so just write down what we've got. We, we approximated LUN2 as two-thirds using our expansion. We know that the error bound from this expansion, we were just told it was less than 0 0.25. So we worked out it's at least less than 0 0.25. And we can work out what actually LUN2 is by putting it on the calculator. We get 0 0.69147182. And so we can work out what the actual error is. The actual error is going to be LUN2 take away two-thirds, which gives us this 0 0.02648. That's the actual error. Um, and then, and this is the last bit that you needed for the, for the mark on this one. We say, well, the actual error is 0 0.026. I mean, it is less than 0 0.25, but it's by magnitude of about 10. So even though this error bound is correct, uh, the 
the actual error is much, much smaller, so it's not a very good estimate for the, the, the magnitude of error. So, okay, so that would be our final mark for that. Okay, look at a couple more quick questions. This one we're going to have a look at for a uh, Taylor series, just to give an example of that one. And um, the first bit we're just going to skip through and just show what the answer is. So the first three derivatives of the function. Um, there we go, that was the first part of this question. Um, so I get ln x, 1 over x, and minus 1 over x squared. And then I'm going to use a Taylor expansion about x equals 1. So for this one I'm going to use this formula. So this is the Taylor expansion and I'm going to replace the a uh, with the 1. Okay, so it's going to be f of 1 plus x minus 1, f dash of 1, etc, etc. Okay, so it's, it's very similar to the McLaurin, um, but it's, it's just kind of shifted along. Okay, so this is my, my approximation f of 1 plus x minus 1, f dash of 1 plus x minus 1 squared over 2, f double dash of 1 plus dot, 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 dot. Okay. Um, but now I've got all the information. Basically, I can just uh, I can put these I can put these values in. So f of one gives me minus one. F dash of one gives me zero. So I just put one into here. F double dash of one gives me one. And I have to work out triple dash as well. So that gives me uh, negative one. So work out all the values. And then just put them in. So f of 1 is minus 1, so that is this one here. f dash of 1, so this thing is going to be 0. Uh, f double dash, I just so this is equal to 1, so it's x minus 1 times by 1 over 2. And this one here, f triple dash is minus 1, so that replaces this thing here. So it's x minus 1 cubed over 6 times by minus 1. Okay, and, and that's it really. Um, I could obviously simplify, I can basically take out this and replace that with a negative. Uh, for the actual mark scheme, it doesn't require that you then expand out the bracket, so you could actually just leave it kind of in this form, obviously just to get rid of the 1 and the minus 1. Okay, so there we go. So this is an approximation for f of x. Okay, and the very last one, uh, just a really quick one, just to show you why sometimes it's, it's much easier to use the formula book. So it's using the McLaren series for the function e to the x, write down the first four terms of the McLaren series for e to the minus x squared over 2. Um, so it actually tells you what to do. It says use the McLaren series for the function e to the x. Even though it says this in the question, it says a lot of students still differentiated, so still try to differentiate the function um, four times in effect, or three times, and, and so they kind of wasted a bit of time on this. Um, so we, all we need to do is use this expansion here, so e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, etc. So we don't need to differentiate anything, they've given us, given us all the details that we need. Okay, so literally all we need to do is substitute minus x squared over 2 into this thing here. So every time we see an x, replace it by minus x squared over 2. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to get 1 plus minus x squared over 2, and then I've got uh, minus x squared over 2 squared over 2, and then the, the next one on this one is going to be x cubed over 3 factorial, so again I substitute it into this one here. And then I just need to expand out the brackets, just be careful with negatives. So I end up with 1, take away x squared over 2, plus this is going to become x to the 4 over 8, and this is going to become x to the 6 over 48. And there we go. So it's much, much quicker than having to kind of differentiate it and then kind of put x equals 0 into the formula.